Okay, uh, what we're going to do is continue on uh, from 12 on. So the previous video would have been steps 1 to 12, and now we'll go 12 on and see where we end up. Uh, so step 12 here is crop. So cropping is a crucial part of this process. It balances the composition and the overall dynamics of the scene. Uh, from the left hand side of the tools panel select the crop tool. So the crop tool is right over there. If you uh, hover over it you might see that there's a shortcut the letter C. That letter C will get you the um, the tool. For example if we have anything else selected and just hit C you'll see that that gets selected. You'll see a, a border around your image. Let's read the rest. Drag the left and the right edges, uh, edge nodes in to crop off the horizontal space. The brightly, sorry, the brightly lit highest mountain peak should fall within the top left intersection of the rule of thirds. So you should know the rule of thirds. Um, that references, let's go here, right about there. And then this should be brought, if you want to just uh, copy my image, it, uh, the rule of thirds basically is where your focus should be. That's one of the main focus areas. And so crop just like this looks quite good. Uh, that looks good. It should look like that. So that's exactly the same. Remember, we only touched those two nodes I just touched and we bring them in. And then we click apply to commit these changes. Uh, remember to actually make it crop, we have to hit apply and then it changes that. Again, it looks like if we zoom in here, it looks like there's a little white line but that's just kind of a glitch. It's not actually there, so don't be freaked out by that. Okay, there we go. And that's step 12, so let's go to step 13. So now we're going to flatten the image. What flattening the images does is it, uh, it basically takes all of our layers here and turns them into a single layer, which makes it a little bit easier to work with. So we need to flatten the image to get rid of the pesky layers. Uh, so essentially we'll have three go into one. So to do that, go to Documents, and then Flatten. So we'll see, Documents, oops, Documents, Flatten. And you should see these turn into one layer. Might just take a minute. Perfect, there we go. Uh, it automatically calls it Pixel. I'll just call it Panorama. Okay, there we go. So, dodging and burning. This is actually a really interesting photography technique. Uh, when you used to take old school photography with uh, film photography, um, essentially you'd take your picture, that picture would get recorded onto a negative. You would project the negative in a dark room on a piece of photographic paper. Um, and what dodging and burning refers to is uh, a technique that you would do by uh, essentially putting more light in a certain area. And you do that by either dodging the light or burning the light in. And so to make this part darker, what you would do is you would cover all this other area with your hands and give this a little bit more time under your uh, projection. And really what you'd want to do is just to create more of a contrast between black and whites. So this is a very interesting article, a movie. It kind of goes over the entire process. I highly recommend you watch that to get just a better understanding of what dodging and burning actually does because it has a really good history in, um, in the photographic world. It was a, one of my favorite things about uh, old school film photography that I think is lost nowadays in uh, the Photoshop Affinity Photo world. So kind of have a little description here. In layman's terms, uh, you use your hands to cover part of the image so the other part gets more light or less light. The light hitting the paper makes it darker. So for us to be able to, um, to do this, it's much easier, but I think it's still kind of magic the way we can do it. We don't get the same appreciation as you would in a dark room. So really, step four is just learning about dodging and burning. Now we're into step 15, which is dodging. So select the Dodge tool from the tool panel on the left side. Uh, you'll need to change some settings. Okay, so first let's grab the tool. Looks like it's underneath the pencil. If I hover over it, 
it'll tell me that my shortcut is O. Let's try that. Oh, didn't select it. Oh, if I click on my image now, hit O. There we go. There we go. So that selected the dodge tool. Remember, whenever there's a little triangle, that means there's something hiding underneath. And we'll see the burn tool, which we'll be using in a bit. But for right now, we need the uh, dodge tool. And then let's go back. Uh, in the context toolbar, set the width to 350 pixels. So this is the context bar. So we want to make sure that's 350 pixels. It should say PX. I just hit enter. Um, what else? The opacity 15%. Okay. Right there, one, five, enter. Okay, and then tonal range to highlights. This is very, very important. Tonal range is right there, highlights. Awesome. Okay, everything looks good. I'll double check, 350, 15, highlights, perfect. Okay, now double check that you made the changes. We're gonna brush over key areas of the uh, image to intensify their highlights. In the middle of the image, zoom in and brush over the bright pink areas of the snow cop, um, covered mountain. So I have a good before and after. And basically what we're doing is we're just bringing out the whites out of the darkness there. So I'm gonna zoom right in. And you can kind of see, it gives you a preview. As I move my mouse, you can kind of see what it's doing. So I'm gonna basically make a brush strokes. I'm pressing and holding, and then kind of moving my mouse. What I wanna do is I'm just going to kind of highlight this area. I'm not taking away all the pink. I just wanna kind of emphasize it a bit with a little bright white. And you'll see when we zoom out, that actually does a lot to um, have our eye brought to that area. So you can see there that's now becoming much brighter, giving the image a lot more clarity and intensity. So I want to do that really over all of my snow. Again, I'm not trying to take away my pink altogether. I'm just trying to highlight that pink, make it a little bit more interesting. Right there, I just had to do several clicks. And right here, I'm doing the same thing. And it doesn't need to be just that bright pink. It could be a little bit everywhere. Uh, if we do too much, remember, we can always do that Control-Z or Command-Z on a Mac. Uh, we can also come back and do the Burn tool. The Burn tool is the opposite. So this might take you a little while to get it exactly how you think it should be. And again, we're not gonna focus on just only the one part. We're gonna go over all the parts we wanna highlight. I think actually as I'm going over some of these other areas, it, it makes them much more interesting. Like right now, they're all just kind of gray. Keeping our brush size at that 350 pixels gives us a little bit more control. You could theoretically make that much bigger. I'm just highlighting that a bit. Okay. Um, right around. So it's, it says here you should play around with all other areas. Um, basically try to highlight those ones for sure. But as you see in this video, I'm going through all of the, those uh, mountains. just to really bring out you can see it really like intensifies the colors there Being that it's only at 15% opacity, it's not going crazy right off the bat. It takes me a lot of clicks to make it really pop. So again, you could change that if you really wanted to. What's nice here, you can kind of see the preview of the area you're working in. So I can always just zoom out. I'm pretty happy with my mountains. I want to make this area a little bit brighter. Just to kind of match. Okay. 
you don't get those cool pinks because it's kind of uh, in the shadows. And then also um, it mentions here you can kind of kind of see this is much more visible right there. So if you don't like that, you can just undo it. Um, we're going to actually do some burning. So I'm just going to make a few kind of more natural passes. Just like that. Okay, so okay, I'm happy with that. Again, this is really nice and bright. And you, really, you play around with it until you're happy. So uh, the side note here is zooming in and out of your image and changing your brush size can make it really easy on you. Change the brush size, we basically just go here. If I wanted it bigger, if we zoom in, you can see now it's much bigger. So it's easier to do a large area, but you have less control. If you want more control, you can go to much smaller. And this is dependent on the size of your image. If you have a low quality image, um, uh, the resolution might be lower. So it really depends on your image as well. Okay. Um, one good thing to note is if you're on your keyboard, if you look next to the letter P, there's a left bracket and a right bracket. So what that those two brackets do, oh, sorry, I was, Change that back to 350. Okay, um, if I hit my right bracket, it makes that larger. If I hit my left bracket, it makes that smaller. So that could be really handy on the fly. It's actually one of my favorite little tips as you're working. So I'll make it a little bit bigger, get this area here. A little smaller for that area. So as I'm working, I'm kind of constantly adjusting. You can just kind of play around with it, make it how you want it to look. So learning those two shortcuts are very important. So uh, the lesson learned here is dodging makes things brighter. And now we can move on to burning. So step 16, burning. Remember that little burning tool is hidden underneath. We select the burn tool there. So we want to burn areas of the sky and water so that they're darker, bringing out the um, supposed to say mood of the scene. So go to the tools on the left hand side, you'll see uh, it's actually hidden underneath. We just did that. So again, anytime you see a little white arrow, means something's hiding underneath. So that's how it looked initially. If I click and hold, click on the, the burn tool, you should see that little flame. And again, now we wanna go into the context toolbar and make some changes. So uh, it says to set that 2000 pixels. Okay, 2000, enter. Um, change the tonal range to shadows. Okay, so we're on shadows here. Okay, there we go. You can see that nice huge brush size. Uh, and the opacity should be 15%, still from this, the previous step. So double check that it looks like mine. And now we need to start brushing along the image uh, on the sky. Don't be afraid to go over it several times just to make it a little darker. Each time you go over it, it'll make it a tiny bit darker as I went over these parts of the water just to make it more dramatic. So I kind of showed you exactly where I was clicking just to make more of a contrast. So again, I want to I want to zoom out a little bit just so I can get a better feel of the overall image. What you wouldn't want to do is just like do some clicking and have the harsh line here. Thanks for trying to help me sub yesterday. Yeah, no problem. It's kind of a nightmare for everybody. Well, especially when everything these guys are doing is online. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty frustrating, I'm sure, for her. Yes, that was my entire day.
Okay, uh, you can see here, like anywhere I'm clicking just makes it a little bit darker. So it takes a long time to kind of make it how you want it. But you can start to see everything kind of blending together. What's nice about having that low opacity is you can kind of go over things a lot. And darken things up a bit, make it a little bit more dramatic. Don't forget to every once in a while, just kind of take a step back, zoom out. Okay, I'll make it a little bit more dramatic there, a little bit there, a little bit too bright there. And yeah, I'm happy with that. Maybe just tone that down just a tiny bit. Perfect. Again, there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's all just kind of playing around with it until you're happy. All right. Oh my God, when will this tutorial ever never end? So. Uh, 17 now. So now we're going to actually add some adjustments layers and, and play around with some adjustments. So we need to make adjustments. So go to the layer menu at the top and select new adjustments layer vibrance adjustments. So layer menu, new adjustments layer, and we're looking for vibrance. Vibrance adjustment, there we go. You'll see a pop up. Always want to refer back to this. Uh, vibrant slider 20% allows me to saturate the sections uh, without changing uh, the scene or introduce any clipping. So you can do it two ways. You can just type it in or you can drag it. If it's 21%, it's not the end of the world. It'll still be fine. And then some people like won't know what to do. They'll, you you kind of think that maybe there should be an apply button, but that's not the case. You just kind of close it. That's it. Uh, if you want to see what it does, like it gives you a preview. So, although basically what this is doing is it brings out that intensity of the color, right? So right here, it doesn't actually turn it black and white because you can still see some pink, but it takes out that that vibrance. Um, this looks obviously a little too fake, but 20% really just punches it up really nicely. So there we go. When we're done with that, we click it, and the cool thing about Affinity Photo is that uh, these layers, these adjustments layers right here can be turned off. So if you don't like it, you can just click it, turn it off. Um, it doesn't actually change your original image like Photoshop. Okay, excuse me. Okay, exposure. So now we're gonna play a little bit with the exposure. Kind of the same ID, uh, ideal there. Uh, go back to the layer menu, new adjustment layer, exposure adjustment. So layer, new adjustment layer, exposure adjustment right at the top there. You get another pop-up. That's kind of how these work. Just move this to the side a bit. All right. Really important to make sure you don't miss any of the steps here. So another pop-up, change the setting of the slider to minus two. Okay. Do, do, do. We can just type in minus two, enter. You can see that changes it quite dramatically. Uh, but once it says opacity and hard light, opacity to 40%, it changes the image totally. Perfect. And blending mode, this will change to hard light. What I love about Affinity is it gives you the preview. So you can actually, like, if you don't know what these do, if you hover over it, it actually just gives you a preview. Obviously, like this does it quite dramatically. Um, but you kind of go down and you might prefer another one. For example, I kind of like soft light over hard light, but uh, for the rest of this tutorial, if we don't follow these steps, it won't turn out necessarily the way we want it to. So I've, I've double checked everything is the same, zero, two, or minus two, hard light, 40%. There we go. And actually there's a, a step here that uh, is really important because we actually need to invert it. So before you do anything else, we need to invert this. To do that, we need to go to layer, menu, 
and select invert and you should see it actually brighten up we're not actually trying to make this darker we're trying to brighten it up so even though it looks like we're um, doing a, a negative exposure once I close that and hit um, what did it say there layer invert right there so it actually brightens it up if we didn't invert it it would keep it dark so that's why it's really important uh, even though you're looking at some of those things like hard light, soft light, soft light looked better, but if you did soft light and invert it, it would actually have made this darker. So really, really important just to follow these instructions because they're all done for a very specific reason. So now we're going to make some more adjustments. From the tool panel on the left-hand side, we're going to grab the paintbrush tool, and then back up on the context toolbar, we're going to set the width to 2000, and the opacity needs to be 100%, hardness needs to be set at zero. So let's follow that. Make sure you have the right brushes, paintbrush tool, context, it says 2000, enter, opacity 100%, hardness 0. Okay, double check that that's correct, yeah, everything's correct, perfect. Blend mode is set to normal, okay, let's see what the next step says. Uh, when we, we basically will see the color panel on the right hand side of the screen we need to set the color to pure white by default mine is white but it's really important to check just in case you played around with anything else um, so right here it actually has a histogram but what we want to do is click on where it says color important that we click on the white for example I can click right here on the black the black is whatever's in front is what we're using so if I click on that white the white is now active. We want an active white. We want to make sure all these are set to 255 because that's actual white. Anything else, even if this was 254, is not pure white. And that is really important here. So double click on the circle. You can double click on it and you should get a pop up. It's basically the same thing as just double checking that these are all 255 right here. RGB, red, green, and blues are all at 255. So we can just hit close there. Okay, uh, that's the step I just showed you. And then we're gonna paint. So uh, now just paint across the water and it will darken. Uh, this is because we're adding an area of image back into the adjustment layer. So this takes some playing around with to make it look really good. Um, so again, just play around with it, experiment. That's kind of where I was painting. Um, remember you have to be on this exposure layer the thing uh, if you don't quite know how these adjustments work um, it works with areas of color so for example like if I hover over it you can see that it gives me a preview of like a darkness and that's because I'm painting in white and anything white will kind of be left over from my uh, adjustments so you might find this like kind of tedious. You can play with it a bit. Again, if you want, you can turn down the opacity to 50%. That I'll show you what kind of a difference that makes. It just means you have to kind of, it's a little softer. You just have to go over it a little bit more aggressively. Again, we're just adding some more drama to this image. We want everything to blend nicely. Okay, I'll zoom back out. Okay, I'm happy with that. You can really emphasize certain areas. There we go. Okay. Done that step. Seriously, when will the stupid picture be done? We're so close. Uh, another adjustment layer, step 20. So go to layer, uh, top of the screen, new adjustment layer, levels adjustment. And set the white to 73%. So layer, new adjustment layer, levels adjustment. Okay, right here, 73% is the white level. That's what it said right here. So let's go down. White level, 73%. Perfect. See how that brightens it up quite a bit? 
perfect. And when we're done with that, we just close it. You can see there, and that's added itself to our layer. It definitely makes it much better. I love just turning these on and off to kind of see what they do. Perfect. That looks awesome. So we're so close. This is just getting better and better every time we do it. Step 21, live filters. So live filters is a great way to add non-destructive adjustments on the fly uh, with low load or improvements. It'll basically improve our image and make it really cool. So click on the layers panel on the right hand side. Uh, select the flatten pixel layer. So the flatten pixel layer was panorama. I just renamed it in here it says pixel still. Then go to layer menu new live filter layer clarity filter so layer new what does it say new live filter layer and clarity where is clarity clarity filter right there okay uh then go to oh sorry i could do that uh there'll be a pop-up so we want to change that radius to four pixels four enter uh, this will give the mountain range a pin sharp look. Oh no. Sorry. Just have to scroll back to that image. That's the one thing I dislike about uh, bloggers. If you click on an image, it's best to right click and go uh, right click open a new page so that you don't lose your spot. Very important to know where you are at all times, what step you're on. And we are. right there okay <clears throat> so it's kind of hard to see right there if we increase see how it gets like crazy detailed 100% uh, is maybe a little bit too much but that four pixels is perfect perfect okay and again close it so you can see here now it has an adjustment right there instead of being a new layer it adds it to that layer because we don't want to add it on to a new layer uh we want to add it to this layer so it only affects this image right there that's why i had you select that image first or that layer first and then click on it all right so now let's get crazy and add some gaussian blur with our blending options to give more of a mystic glow so step 22, Gaussian Blur. Make sure you have that pixel layer selected just as you did in the previous step. So right now it's not selected. If I click on it, it should be highlighted blue. And then go back up to Layer Menu, select New Live Layer Gaussian Blur Filter. So Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Gaussian Blur Filter. Right there at the top. Another pop-up. 0.7 and we want to change that to overlay 0.7 enter blending mode overlay you can see here how just changing some of these can really make a big difference so follow my instructions really important double check 0.7 overlay perfect so we need to make some changes to the Gaussian Blur layer. So we need to select it. This can kind of be a little bit tricky. So you really have to pay attention to how this is done. There is a little arrow on the left hand side of the layer. If you click it, all the layers underneath it will open. So I'm just gonna close that. This is what I'm talking about, this little layer right here. So we wanna just click that drop down menu. That way we can select that Gaussian Blur layer. Uh, if it isn't already, mine is selected, which is great. Uh, if you need to, you can just click on it. This is what it should look like. That's what mine looks like. Perfect. Now, uh, do we want to make it even more difficult? Uh, we need to select the blend ranges. Well, what the heck is that? Well, uh, also, where is it? This drove me crazy. So it took me a long time to actually find out where this is. Uh, but it's actually this tiny little gear on the right side. This one right here. Blend ranges. Click on that and you're going to get a pop-up like this. Okay, there you go. Uh, when you click on this magical little gear, you'll see yet another fabulous pop-up. These are called spline graphs. I like to tell myself that it's essentially something you would do or see in math classes, but I doubt it. Uh, first click on the uncheck linear. So where is uncheck linear? Okay right there 
Um, and then you're going to click on the line in the middle and basically drag it down. So I'm going to click on this one, drag it down like that. And if you click anywhere in the middle, it basically creates that node. And I just want to kind of copy what I have in my instructions here. And that's all I've done. If you want, you could actually uh, select the exact same numbers. It doesn't really matter as long as you're close. Uh, if you're zoomed out of your image, you can kind of see what this will do is a live preview. So I think right around here gives a really nice image. There we go. And that's all we do for that one. So I'm going to close that out, and then we're done. That's it. That is my completed image. Really happy with that. So when you're ready to hand this in, essentially we're done right now, uh, we need to remember to save it as a uh, JPEG under Megabyte just so that we can put it in that Google form for the class. So obviously first I want to just hit File, Save. So it saves it, so I have a copy of it as a document with all my layers. It might take a minute because this is a huge document. Remember, this started off as nine images that were all HD. They're all 65 megabytes roughly each as we were playing with it. It's taking a long time. And then when that's done, we're going to go to File, Export, and we're going to export it as a JPEG under a megabyte. Uh, I'm guessing that this is probably half a gigabyte already. It's a huge image. We can actually probably blow this up to print a massive, massive poster if we wanted to, which would be what we'd do if we're, um, like if this was our art piece and we wanted to print it probably for sale or put it in a gallery. Um, but uh, for our purposes, what we want to do is we want to save a really, really small copy of it so that we can send it in as uh, evidence of completion of the assignment. Wow, it's taking a long, long time. Right click, if you want to see what mine looks like, right click on it, open in a new tab. That's how I prefer to open some of these images. Um, it just made a new tab right there. I can make that a little bit larger. There you go. Yours might look a little bit different as well. Perfect, so mine's done saving. Let's export it now. Export, select JPEG. Estimated file size is super important. I'm guessing right now it's gonna be huge. So what we're gonna do is probably have to drag it way down. The bigger it is, the longer it takes to calculate. Uh, I might just stop this video because it uh, might take a little while, but basically you want to drag this slider down and hopefully it doesn't take as long for you to calculate. Uh, but I'll try probably even let's just say 10, see what that does. And I'll just hit export. Um, I'm just going to put it on my desktop as panorama. There we go. Again, it might take a little while to finish your export. Remember, I'm not necessarily concerned about the quality of this image when you send it to me. I can tell if, what steps you followed and the process of you following them as you've actually created the document. Also really important to save this file in your OneDrive. And because it's a large file, you might want to make sure you have enough time to actually upload it if it's not already in your OneDrive. And that is it, that's the whole assignment.